You know, I love New York City. There's energy, there's famous people walking around all over the place. There's always something going on at any hour of the day or night. It's an iconic city. It's one of the most famous cities in the world. When people from other countries plan a vacation to the U.S., they don't go to Omaha, Nebraska. They go to New York City. And aside from their sad taste in pizza, New Yorkers are in a class by themselves. But I don't want to work there. In this video, I'm going to say my piece about the vaunted New York adjuster license and whether or not it's worth it to get it, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as a cat property independent adjuster. Subscribe now. Click on the bell notification and forget about it. So Eric asks, Matt, what's your take on the value of a New York license? I see this question asked on social media all the time and I get emails about it quite often. So let's talk about the New York adjuster license. Why do people say that the New York adjuster license is a golden ticket? Here's why. New York is a pretty big state. It's the fourth most populous state in the US with around 20 million people living there. So what does that mean? It means that there are a lot of insurance policies there, a lot of vehicles, a lot of houses, and a lot of businesses and commercial structures. New York is also in the top 10 most expensive places to live. Why do we care about that? Because property replacement and repair are going to be more expensive there, and so fee bills can be higher in New York for the same claim that you might have in Des Moines, Iowa, which is a benefit to us, and those are face value reasons to having a New York adjuster license. But the reason behind that reason is actually a little bit different. The reason why IA firms will really push hard on you getting the New York adjuster license is because their carrier clients want them to be able to help them staff a big event if it hits New York, and New York gets hurricanes. The problem is, is that the New York license is pretty challenging to get. So I'm going to say this, I don't have a New York license, nor am I going to get one. It's my choice, and I'm not telling you that I don't think you should get a New York license, not at all. Why would I say this when so much potential money can be made in New York on a big event? Here are the reasons why I personally don't like working in New York. Number one, Cat events there aren't that typical. Maybe once every two or three years, maybe four years, there's like a big winter storm, or every eight to 12 years, they might get a hurricane or a large like tropical storm thing. Those are the only times that I personally worked in New York. Yes, you can argue that plenty of adjusters work every year in New York on cat, but that's a relatively small group. And more importantly for me, Texas, Colorado, Kansas, Missouri are always gonna keep me busy during storm season. So it could be argued that the run of the mill cat gigs in New York are locked up by a relatively small group of people. Number two, New York is expensive. Sure, the fee bill might be a bit higher, but an extended stay hotel in Long Island in 2002 was $900 a week. Or even in the Chicago suburbs that same year, the same hotel was $290 a week. And that adds up. Food is more expensive, fuel is definitely more expensive, and every road is a toll road. The Big Apple is the apple that bites you back. Number three, New Yorkers are a feisty bunch. You can give them everything under the sun on their claim and they'll still yell at you and say unkind things about your mother. Many New Yorkers will assume that you're trying to rip them off no matter what you say. It can be an uphill battle on a lot of claims that in any other part of the country would be smooth as silk. But I love them. I love their passion. And I'm telling you what, if I was negotiating with an adjuster, I'd want a New Yorker there to keep them honest. I truly would. But let's look at it this way. In adjusting, as in many things in life, we can apply the 80-20 rule. We're going to get 80% of our benefit from 20% of our effort. So if I get 80% of my income from 20% of states in the U.S., I'm going to focus on those states. So I know that the region between Colorado and Ohio and Canada and Mexico, that box is gonna keep me busy every summer without fail. And that's where I'm gonna concentrate my efforts. That's where I'm going to get and maintain my license. I'm going to be on the rosters of the IA firms that have big presence in those areas. I'm not getting Hawaii license or an Alaska license, even though it'd be super cool to work in those places. I'm going to focus my energy where it's most profitable to me. And frankly, forget the rest. It's a strategy that's worked for me for my entire career. But that's for CAT, okay? If you're a daily adjuster and you wanna travel and do daily, 
or you're doing any kind of desk work, you're gonna to want to get a New York license without a doubt. You may even have to get a New York license. If you're a staff adjuster, you're gonna to have to get a New York license if you do any desk work. And regarding traveling to do daily claims, I went to California several years ago to work mudslide claims and ended up staying there for 10 months doing slab leaks, which are daily claims. Now, I don't want IA firms to think that I'm trying to dissuade you from getting a New York license. You have to understand that if there's another Sandy or Floyd or whatever in New York, they will need license adjusters. There's no way around it. They need to have people licensed in New York. I choose not to bother with New York, but my advice to you is yes, get a New York license, but get these five or six licenses first. Your home state license, Indiana, Texas, Oklahoma, Minnesota, and Florida, okay? If your home state doesn't have a licensing requirement for adjusters, get an Indiana license first. It's reciprocal with just almost as many states as Texas, and it's got an easier process. Those licenses are going to cover you for most of the most common claims you'll handle as a CAT adjuster, which is Midwest wind and hail. If your IA firm is gonna call you in the next six months, it's most likely going to be someplace inside of that box, Colorado to Ohio, Canada to Mexico. That's where you live as a CAT adjuster. This is your home in here. Then, after you get those first five or six licenses, start picking up the southeastern Atlantic coastal states. Then after that, absolutely go after your New York license. The key takeaway here is that I don't want you to spend a lot of time waiting around to get a New York license first because somebody on social media told you that you have to get a New York license, it's a golden ticket, because you're gonna miss a great hailstorm in Texas or Minnesota that will keep you busy all summer while you're sitting around waiting for something to happen in New York that might not happen for five years. You don't wanna miss the bread and butter stuff that cat adjusters live off of just so that you can say that you have a New York license. Go for the stuff that's gonna keep you busy right out of the gate first and then pick up extra licenses once you've got what you need to get you out the door now instead of just in case. Make sense? This isn't the lottery, okay? So we don't, we don't look at adjuster licenses like lottery tickets, which is what people think of when they think of the golden ticket of the New York license. Question of the day. If you're an experienced cat adjuster, have you worked wind and hail outside of that Colorado to Ohio and Canada to Mexico box plus Florida? And if so, where and how long were you there? Don't include hurricanes and don't include wildfires. For much more information about getting licensed as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by hitting the round subscribe button. Wondering what to watch next? Check out these videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. There was a young woman named Kite whose speed was much faster than light. She set out one day in a relative way and returned on the previous night.